Morning. Good morning. Bloody welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. Morning. Here on the sofa for our favourite, favourite show of the week. Is it? For your favourite, favourite show of the week. Is it? Oh, God's sake. <laughs> That's your cue. That's your <laughs> cue, Paul. A week at the plot. Or maybe Sunday chat. Thank you. Finally, finally. Thank you for joining us. And we'd like to say a big bloody welcome to new subscribers, people who've joined us recently, and of course our old faithful subscribers mm. who always watch and leave lovely comments that we're very grateful for. Very grateful. What? Our heart. Is that where your heart is? I'm trying to look sincere. <laughs> it's not working very well. <sighs> so thank you for tuning in. And first of all, we always start with Reg and Paul's weather report. Yeah. Weather report. It's a bit grey today. It's a bit grey, but very green. It's very, very green. green. London has greened up, greened up for yeah, spring. Yeah. But it's it's cool. I've actually it's been cool. down to the plot already because we have a skip being delivered today, as people on Planet Vegetaria will already know. And, yeah, it's breezy and cold. And it is. I could have done with another... T-shirt on. Layer. I was going to say that to you as you walked out the door. I thought he's going to be a little bit cold, but I won't say anything because he's an adult. <laughs> You're so loving and caring. With normal adult senses. Well, it was a bit warmer when well, I went out. there's a temperature gauge on the wall there that tells you the outside temperature, Bob. You can gauge it from that, but it is cold. I've got my cashmere and warmers on. Your mended cashmere. My mended. I don't know whether you remember, but a few weeks ago I said to you there were a few holes. So I sat here yesterday in the drawing room and mended them with a needle and thread. Here. This is the drawing room. This is the drawing room, Paul. Do they say that? Is that... Is it called a drawing room because that's where people used to draw because there was sunlight or is it something completely different? I don't know, Paul. Maybe the viewers could tell us in the comments below. Or we could do a googly. We could, or we could ask Susie Dent. What does a drawing room actually mean? Well, it would only take six months to get the answer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we'll Google. We'll Google. So let's get on with the show for... Oh, oh I've got a store today. Yeah, well, the weather. We haven't finished on the weather yet. Uh -huh. We haven't. It's grey at the moment. It's going to remain quite grey. Is it? And it's going to remain quite cool. Is it? And it's going to remain quite breezy. Is it? And that is the weather report. I believe that certain parts of Scotland may get snow. No. Yes, I've heard this on the news. Who was it on Planet Vegetaria? They, they woke up in America. They woke up to snowfall again the lovely. other day. How lovely. Summer's not here yet. No. 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 It's a long way off, yeah. No. It's not even May. Do not cast a clout till May is out. Ne'er cast a clout. Ne'er ne cast. Ne'er cast. Ne'er. Ne'er. Ne'er cast a clout. I think Paul's malfunctioned slightly <laughs> this morning. We do apologise. Normal service will be resumed shortly. What of the... Uh, Ne'er cast a clout till May is out. It's referring to the May blossom, Paul, of the May tree. It is indeed. Is yes. that blossom out yet? Um, no. So don't take clothes off just yet. No. Even though what? we are coming up to National Naked Gardening Day. For some people, perhaps. Not in this household. Thank I'm you. I'm not going to be showing my buttocks to anybody. No. Don't think so. Oh, apart from you. Yeah. Well, I may not want to see them. <laughs> well, you might not be offered them. Well, I don't want to be offered your butter. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> You've got a nice buttocks, uh, Paul. I do. I think. Beach. I think one of the best features of me is my bottom. Well, maybe swap your ass and your face around. Yeah, then, Paul. yeah, yeah. Let's get on with the show now, going on too much about things that aren't important. So, in this week's show, we're introducing a new segment. What are we? Yes. Things that are annoying me this week. Oh, God. How long is this going to be? Things that are annoying me this week. What new segment did we bring in a week ago? I don't know, but... We change things up once in a while. At least we don't change the channel name every week. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. <clears throat> things that are annoying me this week. I've only got ten fingers. First of all, whining celebrities. Oh. Whining celebrities. Yeah, People I agree. who have earned huge amounts of money for being mildly talented then start whining that they're getting too much attention. Yeah. Hello, hello. When, when you become a pop star, there's a certain thing that's attached to that fame, mm. called fame. I mean, what she used to say in that show, fame, fame casts. Fame here, does cost. And here's where you start paying for it, in swear it. Huh? Yeah, I'm uh, worried about your pen. It's only an ink pen. Stabbing me it's in the ear. perfectly safe. Um, but, you know, there, are, there is a cost attached to fame. Well, you... To, to celebrity. And if you're a pop star, you're going to, hopefully, if you're successful, sell a lot of records to a lot of people, which will make you famous. If you can't deal with that... Go and get another job. Go road sweeping instead. Or working as a receptionist, like I do. Yeah. Or in a supermarket. Or, or somewhere where you're not going to attract attention. Or stand your ground at the beginning of your career and say what you're willing to do and wait what you're not willing to do. Exactly. Like Kate Bush did. Yes. You, know, you don't see Kate Bush on every single cover of every magazine no. and on every programme when she has a new album out. Would like to see a new album. But you don't see her doing that. You know, she knows what she's going to do. She'll be on Bruce. Yeah, Dude, whatever. That's not you the know. point. But yeah. The point, these new pop stars, these embryonic pop stars who are about 12 years old usually can't deal with the fame and don't want it anymore. Why are people always taking my photograph? That, st that weird, the one that really annoys me is that Billie Eilish, whatever her name is. Oh, I, I can't stand the fame. Oh, well, go and do something else then. Give it all up and go and do something else. Give your money to charity. Well, don't give your money to charity if you don't want to. But if you don't want to have that celebrity life where you're earning lots of money, decide you've got enough money, stop earning and stop going out in front of the media complaining that the media is giving you attention. And then you've got that Kim Kardashian woman. I don't, I really I don't have, really I, know who she is. No, I don't. But she's, I saw it's her family, on Instagram. I saw her on Instagram. Oh, oh my God, the sex tape that Kanye and I made has got into oh a video God, game. Vomit, honestly. Well, you shouldn't have made a sex tape uh -huh. on a device that can be used to transmit it to the internet. But didn't she... Did, surely she did that. I mean, that's all... I mean, these oh, are just self-publicised she, She's crying. People. She's crying and her face is not moving. Isn't her face up here by now? Her eyebrows are actually at the top of a Stetson. Stetson? Does yeah. she wear a Stetson? I don't, I don't know who she is. So anyway, people If you gave whining, me photos, I wouldn't know who she is. Whining, whining, whining. Shut up. Mm. If you don't like it. And you know the other thing that's annoying me this week? Are YouTubers. Really? Who, who think that they're famous. Oh, yes, yes, there's quite a few of those, yes. Who think that they are some kind of top TV star, know it all, and, yeah, they annoy me as well. But you're of course... Make, you're making home videos. 
Yeah. That you happen to be putting on the internet. Like Kim Kardashian did. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Don't overblow it. No. <laughs> so but that's the thing the that moment. annoys me about that's celebrities right. at the moment, right, 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 and right. particularly... Yeah. Elon Musk and Robbie Williams. Oh, whatever. Is these multi-millionaires or multi-billionaires, in the case of Elon Musk, talking about the fact they have no homes and they're homeless. Yeah, whatever. I mean, for God's sake, get real. You know, people will have you in their homes. You wouldn't... You are not homeless. Someone who's homeless has got no home, no money, you know, is living on the street. That is homeless. If you decide to sell off all your homes because you're worth 200 billion or whatever, or a trillion, yeah, well, whatever, right, that's your decision, God, do I'm it. Not, I'm and not what going about on that his, much. his wife and his <laughs> kids? I mean, they live somewhere. You know, they're not out on the street, are they? Yeah. No. Um, so stop going on no, about it. This is my segment. People who don't take their shoes off when they're going to somebody's house. That annoys me. Especially if they're celebrities. And you know why it annoys me? I've always said, for many, many years, you're carrying all that crap... Literally. ...off the streets. Literally. Yeah, and people go, oh, no, no. Especially in the UK, people don't do it. People don't take their shoes off. It's not a thing. Oh, no. I see what you mean. It's not. Yeah. And, you know, for years we've been a no-shoe house... And we make people take their shoes off of, as they walk through the door. Yeah. Because of all the crap in the streets. Yeah. Well, scientists have recently done a study of what is brought in from outside. It's pretty bad. Yeah. There are all sorts of awful pathogens yeah. and God knows what lurking in your rug. Yeah. So take your shoes off. The other thing that's really annoying me this week. People who don't know how conversations work. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. People yeah. that don't know how conversations work. People that think they can walk up to you and talk about themselves and then leave. Yeah. People that do that. I don't understand it. So, for the benefit of the viewers, you, this is how a conversation goes. Oh, good morning, Paul. How are you? I'm all right, Richard. How are you? Oh, I'm very well. Thank you for asking. Have you had a good day today, Paul? I have had quite a nice day. I'm it's listening. been quite busy and it's been quite cool at the plot. So you've been quite busy? What have you been doing? I've listened to what he said. I've been doing some weeding, and I've been doing some watering, oh. and I've been doing some waiting. And how did you find that, Paul? Was I it good? found it really enjoyable. Oh, lovely, Paul. Whilst I was at the plot doing that, what were you doing here? Not a lot. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, thank you for asking, Paul, while you were at the plot. I was doing a few bits of housework. I put a wash on, I tidied a room, and I sat and looked at Instagram for a short period of time. That's how a conversation goes. Asking <laughs> questions, listening. Not it's the... not talking about yourself mm. for a long, long time. And you know what? The greatest conversation lists are the ones that listen and simply ask questions. That's it. So here's your lesson. There we are. Hope somebody learned something. That's it. That's what's... Oh! <laughs> Another one. No, let's move. Alexa, please. Stop. Is Alexa annoying you this week? No, I find her a valuable ally in I, the home. I do find her sometimes when we're not in the home i still ask her to do something well, that's just silly paul and they realize it's not gonna happen no because not everybody's as fortunate as we are to have alexa in the home no no or they're a Google mind you i bought those alexas when they were dead dead cheap didn't i 
They were on special offer. Yeah. If you remember. <laughs> Anywho, Paul, let's move on to the next segment. Mm. What's been in the news this week? Well, I've got a double whammy because I've got something that was in the news that was very annoying as well. <sighs> yeah, um, I'll start. I'll kick off, shall I, Paul? You kick off. Go on. I read in the news about Snowden. Oh! Did you read of it? I did. <laughs> right. Yes. So Snowden is the highest mountain in Wales. Is it England and Wales? Anyway, it's a big high mountain in the Snowdonia region mm. of Wales. And it's very, very popular. Very, very mm. popular. Lots of people walk up Snowdon and go up on the train. So you can climb Snowdon, which is basically walking up a rocky path. There's, don't think, any climbing involved as such. Or you can go up on the train. Yeah, all right. People know what a train is. God, we're not broadcasting to the Martians, Paul. Well, we might well, be. Well, we might be, yeah. And um, the story I read now... This is just crazy. People have been doing a poo, or many poos, on the mountain. Some people even doing a poo in paper cup and leaving it on the footpath. One man was seen doing a poo on the train track by a group of people, and apparently he ran away having been seen. I mean, where did he run away to? He's up a mountain. <laughs> He's up a mountain. I mean, if that had been me, I mean, A, I wouldn't get caught short, and B, pooing... No, just no. He ran away. I mean, I'd have thrown myself off the side of the mountain. Wouldn't you? I don't think you can. I think you roll down there. Yeah. I mean, What? What are these people on? I mean, I don't know about you, but, I mean, we don't go anywhere until all the necessary... Ablutions. Ablutions and bodily functions have been done. Mm. Done and dusted. When well, we go to the children, dusted. I mean, I have to wait till 9.30 for the second wee to come out of the morning. Mm. Of, well, it's about the third wee, I think. And the number two two mm. do. Number 22, is that a bus now? The two to do. Right. I mean, who goes up a mountain needing a poo? Yes. Unless you've eaten something well, you... that's disagreed with you, but in which case you'd know about it in the morning anyway. You would, yeah, yeah. I mean, who does that? Please. Yes, let's poo-poo that idea. Really? Oh, it's disgusting. Can't believe it. Can't quite believe it, Paul. So what else has been in the news? I don't know. You, it's your well, turn Well, no, no, it's your segment. No, I've said my bit. I think... What um, have you seen in the news this week? The Queen? The, the Queen's Queen. 96, yes. That's coming up. The Platinum Jubilee... Is coming up. Coming up. When's we've that? Had, June? We've June. had Easter... And we took a little trip to Guernsey, didn't we, Paul? We did. We did. More of that coming up a little later. Is it? So what's been in the news for you this week, Paul? That's I caught don't... your eye? I saw something in Ethical Consumer magazine that was quite oh, interesting. you did. About tea. Tea and coffee. Hmm. What do you think is the... This is Ethical Consumer magazine that we subscribe to... Full so, of interesting information about ethical things. things. <laughs> um, so I get this um, for for Earth's sake because we we obviously sort of it's an eco shop and blah blah blah. And you had a read of it this morning. I had a little look because it was talking about coffee machines. Now we got rid of our coffee machine we a few years ago because a. I realised that it was horrendous for the environment and the company that owns Nespresso, not terribly good, I'm afraid, um, and B, it had started to leak mm. as well. So I got rid of it. What do you think is the most, the best way of making a cup of coffee? 
the most ethical and the most ethical? Um, I don't know, a cafetiere? It is, cafetiere. Or the Aeropress. But the Aeropress is made out of plastic. Right, okay, but it's long term use plastic. And you have to, and you have to get paper filters, although you can get a metal filter. Mm. So the good old cafetiere is the best way of making a coffee in ethical terms. I mean, in the uh, sort of 80s and 90s, cafetiers were everywhere. They were like the bee's knees. So, in terms... I remember when we were, when we were at functions and things, they were, I mean, they were heavy things. Some were like 18 cup or 20 cup and really quite heavy. But they, yeah. But you always got them in restaurants as well. You got That's cafetier, what I mean. Yeah. Didn't you? Until and everybody started getting coffee machines. Coffee machines, yeah. Which, of course, use a lot of materials in the manufacture, lots of plastic. And if they break down, they're not repairable, a lot of them. Well, a lot the, of the big ones the are. The big ones are. The big Italian course, ones are. But not necessarily the home ones. No, definitely not. You know. No. And it also talked about tea. Mm. Oh, look, it's gone grey. It's gone grey. Grey and gold. We just have to cuddle up for the rest of the afternoon ball. <laughs> Tea. Pass the doodah on the lala. Now, I don't know what brew you'd buy, but the worst... Is... In the whole wide world is Twinings. Comes the lowest, gets the lowest score... On the Ethiscope. So, Ethical Magazine... It and looks the highest... At, it looks at certain brands. It looks at certain products and ranks brands according to how ecological they are or how ecological they're Ethiscope. not. And in terms of tea, Twinings is at it's the bottom. the worst. Along with people like PG Tips, unfortunately... And Tetley, mm. Typhoon, mm. Tailors of Harrogate mm. as well, and Yorkshire Tea. Ugh, hate Yorkshire Tea. He doesn't like Yorkshire Tea. Which is Tailors of Harrogate. But the best one is Hampstead Tea. Which is available at For Earth's Sake in Cranley. So there you go. There you go. So I thought that was quite interesting. I think it is interesting Said. because very often um, when you look at a brand, we, we're to, uh, uh, for our sake, we're talking about this over the next couple of weeks to, to our newsletter people and that. It's about greenwashing, you know, yeah. how a brand that is really good like Pucker gets bought by a big company like Unilever, as happened, to effectively give it a better sort of face to the consumer and that's greenwashing and yeah. so much greenwashing goes on in well oh. everywhere everywhere yeah but yeah anyway. it's it's fascinating because the good thing about ethical magazine is that it looks really at, at the whole um the whole chain the whole um what my production chain of a product from sort of farmers growing it right through to it being put on the shelf and its sustainability and also the company that might own it. So, yeah, I, I'm a great fan of the magazine. Blah, blah, blah. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> so, <laughs> we took a trip to Guernsey. We did. To go and see Paul's mum, Mary. Yeah. Uh, for her 90th birthday. Yep. The trip didn't start off too well, did it, Paul? No. Well, it started off well. We got down to Southampton Airport and everything was fine and dandy and then we... And just so you know, the reason we travel from Southampton Airport is it's a small airport. It's very easy to park, very easy to get there, very easy to check in. There's no distance to departures. It's all very, very easy, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Whereas Gatwick, you have to park half a mile away. It takes ages to get to the terminal. It's packed usually of people. It's enormous, so it takes ages to get to the gate. 
You have to take travel eaters. Mm. <laughs> Check-in is like, woo, you know, it, it's, it's all too much. And Southampton actually is only about 20 minutes further by car. Isn't it, Paul? No. It's about huh? half an hour. Half an hour, 20 minutes? <laughs> much of a muchness. So actually, in terms of getting to the gate, it's much, much quicker to go to Southampton. Easy, easy, For easy. For us. So we got to Southampton, we went through security, you forgot to take your liquids oh, out of your bag. Yeah. But of course, it's such a small, friendly airport, they don't arrest you for something like that. <laughs> they wouldn't at a busy, um, you know, busy airport, because it's a busy big airport. Anyway, so we, we're sitting... Oh, shut up, Richard. So we're sitting there, and then they announce that the flight is delayed due to fog in Guernsey. Well, we know what fog in Guernsey can be like. Hello. And we're sitting in the departure lounge and it's beautiful sunshine outside. And we thought, mm, might not get away today. And then about half an hour later, they announced that the next notification for our 745 flight was going to be at nine o'clock. I wasn't best pleased, you were, to be honest, yeah. having to be told that we're going to have to wait another almost two hours for any information, mm. when we kind of felt it in our bones that that flight is going to get cancelled. So we were checking the departures in Guernsey because the flight from Guernsey comes to Southampton and back. That's not always the case, but it is for these two flights. And it was not leaving Guernsey and it was being delayed itself. And then they started calling for people who might need accommodation overnight to come forward and make themselves known because there was a chance that it wouldn't get away. As soon as that happened, I said to Richard, I'm going to wait for the queue to die down and then we'll, we'll see if we can switch to tomorrow's flight. Um, because we were flying Blue Islands and had booked through Orany, which is Guernsey Airlines, I then had to phone Orany to do that. But they were very, very good. And the lady did say, we're looking at going through the process of cancelling the Guernsey flight. So I'll move you over at no cost to the flight tomorrow. The reason being is, as many of you know, I use a night cream in my eyes to prevent... Uh, corneal abrasions. I keep an eye cream in Guernsey at Mums and I have an eye cream at home here. I don't normally carry the eye cream because I don't anticipate having to stay over somewhere, usually. I didn't have the eye cream with me. So the option of a hotel for the evening was not for us. So we had to go back home. So we didn't travel until the Friday. Back to... Back to... Back to Southampton. Back to Southampton. Saturday. Oh, that was the Friday. That was the Friday. That was the Friday. Yeah, we didn't travel until the Saturday. So we kind of lost a day. Yeah. Because of fog. But we had a lovely time with your mum. We did. We did. We had a nice time. She's doing well. I mean, she's, you know, she's 90. And I think the good thing is, in some ways it's a good thing, she doesn't sort of accept that she's 90 and she wants to get on and do things. And I think as long as she wants to do that, she'll remain as mobile as she can. So she likes to go out for her walk every day, you know, out around where she lives and she does that with a walker and that's all that's all good so obviously when when we were there I was going out with her each day and we were going on the walk and having a look at the flowers and yeah and doing a little different route than mum does as well um simply because I was with her so we had a we had a nice time and we got out as well not as much as we normally yeah. do. I mean, let's be under no illusions here. She's a 90-year-old woman. Yeah. 
with all the issues that go with that. Yes. You know, I mean, let's not give people the impression that she's sprightly no. and youthful and agile, because she's not. Alexa, please stop. You know, she does have, you know, a number of health issues. Um, you know, there is some pain management there mm -hmm. as well. Um, but, you know, she has an enthusiasm about her for having chats, for watching some TV. Particularly um, Murder, she wrote. For e eating a good, hearty meal. She's mm. got a good appetite. Um, when Richard gives her her meal, or, or he plates it up and I, I take it to mum, so we sit around the table, and she very often, oh no, that's, that's too much, I won't eat all of that. And then it's gone. <laughs> it's, she it's eaten. She enjoys um, the meals that I cook, mm. uh, which is obviously, you know, a pleasure. It's a pleasure to cook for her. Um, you know, we have sort of traditional things, cauliflower cheese, um, vegetarian shepherd's pie, sausage and mash. Omelette. Omelette with chips and peas. Um, you know, things like that. So we, we eat well when we're there and we make sure she eats well as well. Mm, yeah. um, so that's good. So yeah, it was good to see her. She had a few friends pop by for her birthday. Uh, she had a few lovely cards and some flowers. Mm. So yeah. It and was, chocolates. And lots of chocolates. Lots of chocolates. Which she, she enjoys munching down on those after dinner. <laughs> after she's had her pudding. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know. So I make a tr every time we go, I make a trifle, and that always does for two meals after two meals, and then there's always a portion that we leave for Mum for her yeah. to have the day we leave as well. So um, you always do the the um, supper in the evening. You always do yeah. the evening meal. Yeah. I usually make the sandwiches at lunch. We normally have sandwiches, and then we sort of set the table and do breakfast between us, don't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. It was it was good to see her. So she's she's okay. Yeah. She's okay. She's yeah. ninety. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very rare you find a ninety year old that's that sprightly. She said when I you said know. about um or somebody said about another ten years and she get a, a card from the Queen. She said, Oh, I'm not going to live that long. And then she went, I didn't think I was going to get to 90, though. Exactly. So, exactly. there we are. Yeah. Every day is a blessing. And there's a few things that we were doing in preparation for her moving um, into a care home at some point as well. So, um, I think it's good that that process is happening and certain things are being put in place. But yeah. we'll keep you updated on that mm. as time goes on. And a big thank you to all the carers oh, that yeah. go and see mum. Um, t Mum has um, personal care twice a day, which is absolutely fantastic. And they're all so lovely. Yeah. They really, really are. And we often, um, I think because Mum is sort of, she's not an early bird mum. Um, so she gets seen sort of at the end of people's um, shifts, if you like. So we very often have a long chat with the sort of carers um, because it's the end of their shift, so that's nice as well. So the weather was good as well. Um, we took a nice walk one morning out to a place called Lancress, mm -hmm. uh, which has several um, towers and military battery uh, buildings. Uh, some are left over from World War Two. Some of the towers are, are a lot older than that. Napoleonic. Um, yeah, so we, we had... Uh, fun one morning walking around there. It was beautiful weather. Mm. Um, if I if I'm able to, I'll put a little video here, which I shared on Instagram. I'll put a little bit on here. Um, so yeah, that was good, and we we flew back on Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, which was fine, absolutely fine. The only thing we do miss. Is service on the flight. There's still yeah. no service yeah. on the flight. So you can't get a drink on the flight. It's only a 35-minute journey. Um, so, you know, it's all... Service is usually quite quick. 
But we used to enjoy a biscuit and a coffee on the flight port. We did, we? actually. We did. Yeah. It was a little highlight. Yeah. But no, they're still not doing that. Still got to wear a mask on the flight. It'll be interesting to see whether that 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 sort of service actually comes back. Oh, I mean, yeah. whether it was a uh, whether it was cost effective yeah. as a service or not, um, and also duty free as well. No duty know, free. Um, was duty free cost effective on on short flights? I, I don't really know. It was usually very quick service. Yeah. And yeah. it was only usually a few people ordering a drink or buying some cigarettes or alcohol. Yeah. So I don't know whether it will be, but that remains to be seen. And it will be interesting to see when masks get, yes, it you will. know, um, removed Lovely. as well. A couple of other things have happened this week. I think. I've still not heard back from Vinted. Oh. My account is still blocked. For the suspicious financial activity that's never taken place. <laughs> Please. Um, so my customer is still waiting mm -hmm. to receive their item. Uh, but I can't get into the account. I've sent them a third message asking them to sort this out. And I've heard nothing back from them. Absolutely appalling. Appalling, appalling. But I'd like to bring your attention to another piece of customer service, which was excellent. Just before we left for Guernsey, one of my Velux blinds up at the top of the house broke. I only bought these um, in 2019. Three years ago. Just three years ago. Just under three years ago. They have a three-year guarantee Which on I them. found out upon further investigation. Um, and luckily, I was within that period. So I emailed them straight away and said, the blind is broken. Can you let me know? Is this covered in the guarantee? Can you send me a replacement cord? That was on Easter Saturday morning. Yeah. yeah. And they got back to me. Easter Sunday morning. Easter Sunday morning. And they've said, yes, the blind, the full blind is covered under the guarantee and they will be sending me a replacement. Amazing. Amazing. Mm. That's customer service. Yeah. And the reason it's good customer service is because it exceeds your expectation. Mm. Mm. They broke through the expectation barrier, I tell you. Because good customer service is based on meeting and exceeding expectations. Your expectations, good communication, and also the ability to take ownership. And they've done all three. Mm -hmm. All three of those things. Whereas Vinted have done none of those things at all. So you can see the difference. Actually, we did have, when we were flying to Guernsey on the, um, the following day, we did have some good customer service then as well. Um, even oh, though we yes. had been transferred onto yes. the flight on the Orany system, we weren't actually on the, on the plane for the Blue Island system. And... Um, so when we went to check in, or we were checked in, when we went to get our, our tickets, because they have to be printed out at Southampton, they went, oh, we don't have you. And they put us across to another lady, didn't they? And what did she say? Well, she was a lovely Swiss lady. Mm. And she looked me in the eye. And she said, don't worry, you will be on the flight. She was in Spectre Clouseau, was she? Don't worry, you will be on the flight. <laughs> and she looked me in the eye directly and just gave you that reassurance, a promise, a reassurance. She knew she'd sort it out because she was confident enough mm. to know her job, you know? So, uh, so there was some sort of that changing that they had to do. And then when we were actually boarding the flight... She was there again yeah. because when they scanned our, our passes, she knew they would come up as not there 
but we could go through. Yeah. So, yeah. That was good. So Excellent. there you go. Excellent. And I have had some good and some bad customer service from Shell Energy. Still haven't had an invoice, um, a bill, even though we'd been promised it. And then suddenly a bill appeared. And we had a smart meter installed two months ago. And the bill has come through as an estimated reading. Hello. They know exactly what we're using. Every day. You've got a smart meter. You can look every hour. You know. We only need to pay what we're using. And of course, interestingly, the estimated bill is about £60 higher than it should be. So I've put further meter readings in that actually show that the, the bill is far higher than it should be. And hopefully that will be sorted out. But then this morning I got a call from Shell with the lady who spoke to me about four weeks ago to say that something that was promised to be sorted out had finally been sorted out and our bill would be corrected in May. And then when I asked her about the bill that we'd had that was wrong in April, she said that it would all come out in the wash in May. So I will be watching that with interest. Good. Because what we've also noticed is that the amount of money that the smart, uh, the smart meter says that we're using is wrong. The actual meter readings are correct, but the amount of money we use daily is incorrect on the reading that we're supposed to rely on. So, yeah. There we are. Thames Water... Oh. I did a reading with Thames Water. I put it in. The bill arrived the next day. And it was Perfect. right. Right. Good. So, finally, 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 what have we watched on TV this week? Not really a lot. We watched Murder, She Wrote. We, moms, we did. We? we did. And um, which was quite good, actually, because we didn't end up watching Bargain Escape to the Hunt in the Country. The what in the country? No. The Hunt in the Country. Right, okay. Yeah. Or some god awful daytime television programmes. Your yeah. mum wasn't watching daytime TV, which no, was good. No. She was reading. Mm -hmm. um, so, what else? We, we started the new season of Russian Doll. <gasps> oh, yeah. It's totally different yeah. to the first season. Um, but strangely engaging yeah because she she's drawing you into this story we're not really sure where it's going to go or what's going to happen um but it's it's very it, it's totally centric to her isn't it mm. it's all about her but we're learning about these other people um in her life and in her family's life and history and all of this I'm not going to go into too much detail but yeah it's totally different so if you've not seen season one of russian doll watch it mm. yeah and that's on netflix 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 yeah. um we've continued with parks and recreation yeah we also watched the next episode episode of picard yeah which we enjoyed. Yeah. I think we're almost coming to we the season finale. Week. No. Didn't we? No. Oh, no, it was Easter, was Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. We filmed slightly early last week, which you didn't spark, did you? Mm. No. And then <sighs> um, when we were in Guernsey, we watched an episode of Sarah Lancashire in oh, Julia. 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 Julia um, Child. I think it was something like episode five of the the, the series. Um, but I rather enjoyed it. Yeah, the reason it. we watched it, I wanted to see what it was like um, because we don't get the channel that it's on Yeah. with our package, yeah. but your mum does. Um, so, yeah. So when we can watch it from the beginning, we will do. Yeah. Not sure how at the moment because we're certainly not going to be paying for another package. No. No, 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 this is not going to happen. I'm sure it will. In fact, we're thinking of cancelling a couple of the others. I think it will come on to, you know, 
another platform in a year or so's anyway, time. Anyway, so we'll Paul, watch it then. that's enough now. Was that's the end. That we no, that's the end. That was the end. That's yeah. the end of the show for this week. Mm. It's time to say goodbye. Time to say goodbye. There is something that we're going to be watching. What? No Time to Die. No, I won't be watching that. You will be watching no, it with me. No, I don't watch that. So that's the new James Bond. Crap Apparently it's on Prime for a limited period. Crap James Prime. Bond, Carl so we'll Bear, be Daniel that. Craig. Yeah. I don't like Daniel Craig. doesn't do anything for me. Oh, you're my Daniel Craig. No, I'm not. <laughs> right, we're going now. Thank you. Bloody thank you for joining us this week and we hope you've enjoyed the show. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. Is that it? That that's it. That's that's how you're finishing Thank today. You, goodbye. You're, yeah, yeah. Say goodbye. That's very Sarah Lancashire and Julia, isn't it? I think maybe we do an impression of her at some point. I can, but I, my voice isn't ready to do it. My voice isn't ready. My voice isn't ready. I need to prepare. I need to prepare my voice. Because she's. The sort of speaks in the back of his throat, sort of almost. <laughs> Julia Child. It's kind of there. It's not, it's not quite right, but it's sort of back here. Yeah. So there we are. Thank you. Julia Alla Richard. No, there we are. So, Paul, thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.